Welcome, everyone, to the Energy Advisors podcast. I'm your host, Rex, that energy guy. Energy Advisors, we talk everything energy. And today I got a great topic about to talk about solar thermochemistry. And it's amazing. There's some breakthroughs that just blow your socks off. But before we go there, I want to remind you, if you missed the last episode, number 49, I think you want to look at this. It is a, a ruling from the Department of Labor that is reinstating policies that kind of get and trying to get rid of the gig economy. So people using 1099s. The, there's some good to that. It's going to uh, get rid of some of the yo-yos in the industries, but it's also going to cause things to go up in price. So when you get a chance, um, take a look at or listen to episode number 49. All right, before we get started on today's topic, which I am so excited to tell you about, we want to thank our partners in our um, podcast, uh, our good friends over at Valor Roof and Solar. I've been working with them for quite some time now. Great organization. You know, one of the problems with the rooftop solar industry is there's too many goofballs out there. Two boys, a dog, and a ladder. They call themselves a solar company. And they're out there. They'll do anything to get a sale. High pressure. Sometimes they're dishonest. Well, they give the industry a black eye. Well, that's not our friends over at Valor Solar. Um, they uh, do systems, and they can give you uh, systems in Colorado, Utah, Idaho, Nevada, and Arizona. So if you're interested in getting connected with them, integrity-based, they'll help you through the entire process. Just go to the website, energyadvisors.today, and fill out the form. And our next um, partner in the show is our good friends over at uh, Universal Wind Kinetics. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a oracle and forecaster, but I can tell you there's been innovations in of the turbines for residential wind. So these things are not huge. The blade is 22 inches, but it'll, at rated speeds, it will actually create more um, kilowatts or wattage than a than four solar panels. So what's interesting, solar during the day, the wind blows mostly at night a lot of days. So really interesting technology. If you want to investigate it, I highly recommend it. Go to the website, energyadvisors.today, fill out the form, and we'll get you in touch with them. All right. So thanks to all that housekeeping. Uh, go back to listen to number 49. And then uh, thanks to our partners. Today's topic is, is exciting. Now, I'm a little bit of a geek, okay? And I do have a science background, but I'm not like an engineer or a chemist, but I did study those disciplines. So I love this kind of stuff. The innovation cycles in technology are going crazy right now. You know, I've been in technology, computer, software for more than three and a half decades. And right now in energy, I am watching this. This is almost like the dot-com era. This is about um, when you want to make a comparison to hardware, software. The innovation cycles are just going crazy. And this one is exciting. All right. So I want you to play along with me if you can. Uh, I want to talk about the concept. Could you imagine if we had a coal plant that was burning coal to create electricity? And the outcome of that is not only the electricity, but it created more coal. Oh, my gosh. What a great concept. Well, it doesn't exist with coal. But guess what? It can happen with sulfur. All right. Wow. What do you mean? Well, let's let's examine this. And I'm going to bring this down to my level. Okay. Molten... Um, Sulfur salts are, or molten salts primarily, is the primary um, technology that is used to store solar um, thermal heat uh, when they're doing it on an industrial scale. So you're burning um, molten salts and that creates it. It's used in mining applications a lot. Well, there's a big difference that's happening with this, with sulfur, because it has a higher heat value. All right. So molten salts are state of the art for thermal for solar thermal, but sulfur is so much more a magnitude of energy because of its density of thermal energy storage. So there's a project going on now. It's called Sulfuriel, and it's um, you can find it on the internet. And it's really interesting because solar's energy, sulfur's energy density is so much higher than molten salt, it's actually magnitude higher, that you get a higher heat value, okay? So it's a very cheap um, storage medium in sulfur um, that you can use the chemical com combustion. All right, so 
Again, a little confusing, but we'll get there. Hang with me. All right, so let's talk about a particular thing that we use every single day, or most of us use every single day, gasoline, okay? So if you're going to look at energy density, um, there's a uh, thing that you call kilo, um, kilojoule per kilogram. So kilojoule per kilogram. We're looking at uh, um, gasoline, put in your car every day, the uh, kilojoule per uh, kilogram is 45,000. And to get that, your cost is right at 11 cents per um, kilo, kilogram. kilogram. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. So hang with this. It's actually 0 0.108, but we'll round it up and we're just going to say 11 cents, okay? Now, if you take sulfur and the same kilojoule per kilogram, it's 12,500. So it's roughly a third, a little, un, a little under a third. However, the payoff is enormous. Instead of 11 cents, it's less than two cents. Okay, think about that. So it is essentially five times more efficient. Now, sulfur is, is available everywhere on earth. I mean, it's a huge, very common. And the nice thing about it is if you burn sulfur, you don't have the same emissions that if you burn coal. So let's walk through this process a little bit. Um, when you burn this, essentially, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify this, there's a huge difference between burning coal and burning sulfur. If you do this in the process that they're talking about with solar thermochemical sulfur cycle that the project is working on, when you combust the sulfur, you would generate new sulfur every single time. So it's a continuous loop. So how this works is you burn the sulfur and it creates sulfur dioxide, which then is processed into sulfuric acid. Well, the sulfuric acid then creates, can be um, reacted to and creates sulfur again. It's a continuous cycle, okay? It's really an interesting breakthrough. Now, it can be used as a storage uh, medium for heat, and that's what we're talking about, and heat is what we do to, to uh, create electricity. And this cycle allows you to get energy out of sulfur and store it, and so we now have a source that can provide heat. And why it's important is that the chemical companies are now coming in to look at this and be interested in this technology. Um, I, I won't get, there's some really technical explanations of this, but why um, sulfur uh, thermochemical cycle is so relevant now is because of solar heat. Today's concentrated solar thermal can generate very high temperature heat from its solar field in heliostatus, okay? So I'm basically saying you're concentrating the solar heat. Then you put that solar heat to, to create this burning process and you now have an endless loop. Okay, now let's put it in perspective. I'm not gonna have one of these in my backyard, okay? These are large industrial applications, but we could get to a point when they perfect this technology that you're going to have virtually an endless cycle. So you get a big pile of sulfur, you burn it like you'd burn a big pile of coal when you put it into your um, your power plant. Then you take the um, sulfuric acid, reconstitute it, and you got sulfur again. And it's much cleaner than uh, burning coal. So, you know, the, the process has been around in concept since the late 70s, but with today's more climate conscious world, uh, and the production of hydrogen is back into focus, this really becomes a great augmentation for storage to guarantee this chemical process that we can store heat with this. And again, we're talking about moving electrons. That's all we're really doing. That's what we do in the in industry energies, in industry, uh, the energy industry. Gosh, I'm tongue-tied today. So keep an eye on this. I'm going to do a, a little more of a deep dive, okay? Um, on this, I just wanted to introduce the concept because this one is going to be a game changer, I think, as we start to look at um, storage of heat and um, the 
constant loop to be, we can have a closed loop system where it basically is self-generating. So um, a great concept there. So anyway, I wanted to introduce this. I will uh, go on a little deeper dive in the next couple series. And again, if it's too technical, I'm, I, I don't want to bore people to death, but I just get excited because I see a world where we can go to much cleaner um, resources and come up with this innovation. Uh, the human mind is it's just amazing. It, it really is. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you are listening on the video platforms, our good friends over at YouTube and Rumble, make sure that you subscribe and get all the notifications. If you're listening to any of the podcast platforms where we publish, which I think it's everywhere, uh, make sure to follow. Thank you for tuning in today. And until next time, I'm going to say what I always say. Thanks and make it a great day.